that genetic code is packaged into different chunks uh, called chromosomes. And you end up with two copies of each of these different chromosomes. There's 23, as you probably know, different chromosomes. And one of them you get from your mom and the other one you get from your dad. And that's hopefully pretty familiar. Two copies are expressed in the protein in terms of this concept of dominant versus recessive, which you've probably also heard about. Uh, and if you think about the different possible combinations across these two genes, you can get two dominant, one dominant, one recessive, if either way from your mom or your dad, or both recessive. Okay, and so three quarters are going to have uh, at least one dominant uh, pair, uh, and only one quarter are recessive. And and all the kind of bad stuff, the the, the major forms of illness that persist are in this recessive uh, uh, subset. And that's why incest is risky. Um, if you, uh, uh, you know, have uh, sexual reproduction th through people who are closely related, you're gonna end up with a greater chance of these recessive recessive cases. Um, and, and those are the ones that evolution hasn't sort of filtered out uh, over the process, over the course of time. Uh, because only it only occurs in one quarter of the cases statistically overall. Uh, one thing that's really interesting that I was surprised to really understand uh, in looking this stuff up is that your randomization, everybody talks about how important this kind of process of uh, creating new variation, this diversity uh, of genetic expression that is really the fuel for evolution. You need to try out new things and see what's what works, et cetera, um, that this randomness doesn't occur directly between kind of mom and dad here. It actually happens prior in the construction of the kind of uh, eggs and sperms, okay, that those, that's at that process when the egg or the sperm itself is being made is when, in fact, your parents' genetic copies, the things that you've got those two copies of, that's when you get this kind of random intermixing. So you're really kind of mixing your parents' uh, stock of, of genes into a new random combination for each individual egg and sperm that's, that's constructed. But then once those two get together, it's just a simple kind of pairing of the two things. So you don't actually kind of mix your parents directly in your own genome. You just have these kind of two copies uh, directly that don't mix. So here's the logic about the dominant and recessive thing. You, if you have uh, blue, it turns out that blue eyes is actually a recessive uh, characteristic. Um, and so uh, if there's some uh, gene that expresses to positively create a, a color, it turns out that blue eyes are actually the absence of this kind of color pigmented uh, gene. And so you only get that in this one quarter case where you get kind of recessive, recessive, and that's what ends up with blue eyes. Uh, and so this is really that three quarter, one quarter logic uh, kind of represented graphically. The fact that there is uh, quite a number of blue eyed people indicates that in fact, some recessive coding genes are kind of propagated in, uh, in through sexual reproduction and so these, that does indicate that some of this kind of recessive stuff is not all bad. There are these kind of uh, maybe some sort of like uh, reserve of genetic diversity that can be coded in these recessive genes. And sometimes they end up being useful uh, for, you know, disease resistance and other kind of survival relevant things as well. Uh, and so that may be a reason why we still have these kind of recessive things. There's kind of always in this evolutionary process, this kind of cost benefit trade-off uh, producing these kind of random things. A lot of times new random genetic mutations don't end up being useful. And so that ends up being kind of these dead ends, so to speak. Uh, but sometimes it produces these really useful outcomes. And, and so that kind of rolling of the dice is really what happens in the context of genetics. And uh, as we saw in those computer simulations, this kind of uh, rolling of the dice, this, this genetic algorithm that's used to search uh, for different kind of quote unquote solutions to problems um, can be very powerful computationally. And so this is something that actually is widely used in computer science, uh, these genetic algorithms to explore 
and, and come up with new solutions to hard problems, they are very successful just in the same way that evolution is very successful. And, and life is sort of a solution to how to, how to survive in the physical world uh, that is uh, uh, derived from the same kind of random search and select the good outcomes and then throw in some more randomness and repeat. 